Well, good morning. It's good to be with you guys, and it's good to start to feel like a human being again, Barry. I tell you, I have battled this uh, congestion since the 1st of May, and only in the last week or so, I'm starting to get my voice back, and, and uh, so we're just, we're, we're getting there. Uh, they told me it was a six-week process. Doug, I hope you didn't bring this from Florida to me. Uh, I know that he said he battled it over the, the, the winter, so it was encouraging to know that it was a six-week process, so I didn't get down. I just kept plugging and kept holding on, so I really appreciate your prayers and we are beginning to feel better and, and starting to get uh, uh, most of it back. So it's, uh, it's, a little, it's a little better today than it has been. Today, in the second service, at the beginning of the second service, we are going to be dedicating babies. And as I told them, if they've got if they've got a forty year old living in the basement, they need to get rid of. Then you know, just kind of encourage them to get out, and we'll dedicate them to, and they can go back home and change the locks, and that'll be fine. So I don't know if anybody has one of those, but anyway, today is a very special day. We do have we have had we've been so blessed at Living Faith in the past year with a lot of babies. Uh, we we've had so many, and uh, it's been just amazing to watch, and it's so special and so sweet. And, and I realize that uh, when I talk to a room this size, parenting falls in a wide uh, array uh, that, you know, some of you guys are empty nest. Some of you guys uh, don't have children of your own, but uh, just about everybody has some influence over with connected to young people, whether it be babies, whether it be uh, uh, nieces, nephews, whether it be good friends, whether it be the children of living faith uh, that you serve here and that we work with, this is huge. And so I just want to share with you this morning what I feel like has been something that has guided me. I'm going to share with you some stories because as far as a parent uh, is concerned, I've been at this now for 23 years. And, you know, the thing about that is, is I, I, and as you go through that process, when you first have that little baby handed to you, you're like, oh my gosh. You know, I remember the month before Taylor was born, just the overwhelming sense of inadequacy. You know, I just, it was really an, an overwhelming sense of inadequacy for me in, the, in that time period because it was before I had surrendered to the call to the ministry and we had just moved back home. I had just started teaching and it became real to me that I was going to be a dad and, and it became real to me that I was going to have a human that I was going to have to care for and teach and train and, 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 and so it was just an overwhelming sense of of inadequacy. So if you've ever had that feeling, let me just share with you, that's common unto man, okay? And, and, and it's just part of it. And so you just have this feeling of, you know, I don't know what to do. And that's what I had. I had those feelings of, I just don't know, I just don't know what to do. And, and as I go through this process, because when you have that infant and it's like, my gosh, this is the hardest thing ever is getting through diapers, you know. This is the hardest thing ever, getting through potty training. This is the hardest thing ever, sending them to school for the first time. And as I go through the process, my Christian brothers and sisters are around me, and, and uh, it was Dan Porter, actually. Dan just retired from the Soil Conservation Service. He's a good Christian friend. I loved his dad and, and uh, over at Beaverdam Baptist. And I remember having a conversation with him, and his daughter was a few years ahead of Taylor, and he said, wait till you experience the challenges of parenting an adult child. I was like, what? What are you talking about? He said, oh, you'll figure it out. And, and so now I have an adult child. I have an adult child who's married, and I'm still her dad. And, and so it's, that's not easy either. It's, it's a whole different world. It's a whole different world. It, it completely changes everything. And so there's a whole, you know, I've experienced it. And, and of course, right now I have a 15 year old Michaela child. Okay. And she's not here, so I can pick on her just a little bit, but my gosh, okay. God is, has such a sense of humor with her. And, and so he has given, he has given her, yes, he does. He has such a sense of humor. So he has given me a female phototype of myself uh, to raise. And, and so I'm looking at her going, you are so me and I frustrate me. Okay. And, and so, so we have, so I've got a teenager in the house and, and, and then I've got an adult child. So I've been through this a lot. So I just want to share with you guys this morning some stories, some things that I have learned. And, and, and the first thing that we want to remember, because we can get together. Sometimes, sometimes it's okay to do that. Sometimes you'll get together and commiserate. Okay, you know what commiserate means? You just kind of get together and go, oh, these kids are driving me crazy. Yeah, teachers are really, that's why I never go to teacher's lounge, because teachers can get sucked into that sometimes. They'll go to the teacher's lounge and they kind of commiserate about how awful their kids are. And I'm like, look, dudes, this is all we got. Okay, we got to do the best we can with what we got. So let's not be miserable. Let's be happy. So we have to remind ourselves, Psalm 127.3, we have to remind ourselves that children are a heritage 
from the Lord. Okay? Guys, they're a gift. Okay? They are a gift. They are a precious gift and a precious blessing to us. And sometimes we have to remind ourselves of that. Okay? Children are a heritage from the Lord. Offspring is a reward from Him. And so as we set aside this day, the purpose of this day and the purpose of what we do in the Baptist church is we don't do anything to save these children, okay? Understand that. This is not, this is not any type of, of a, 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 a moment, but this is a moment that we as parents and we bring those babies and we, and we pray God's blessing on them and we pray God's blessing on their parents, okay? And, and we dedicate those, those children to the Lord and, and, and that we dedicate those parents as well that we can unite together to do everything to celebrate the fact that, that we have a gift from God. So how do you become the parent? How do you become that grandparent? How do you become that, become that aunt, uncle? How do you become that influential person in a child's life that God wants you to be? How do you become that person? And how do you invest in the young people the way God would have you to invest in them? There's three passages of Scripture, three ideas, three concepts that I want to just share with you this morning. I could share tons of them, but, but, but I think these three, I kind of, kind of whittled them down to something that I felt like you would be able to, uh, to, to, to sink your teeth into. A lot of these things we've heard before, but this is a day to remind, this is a day to encourage, this is a day to kind of refocus our attention on what we do with our kids. And Proverbs 22.6 this is one of those things that um, there's a lot here, okay? And I want to kind of dig into this just a little bit. And you've got different uh, versions of this. This is the NIV. It says, start children off on the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Now, you guys have heard this. You guys that have been around church your whole life, you have heard this. You have heard this. You have heard this. Train up a child in the way that we would go, and when he gets older, he will not depart from it. That has probably been ingrained in some of your head forever. Okay, let's talk about this just a little bit because, because this is something that is foundational for being a good parent or an influential person in a child's life. First thing that you need to understand is this is wise advice, okay? Because look who wrote it. Okay, it's a proverb, and it's a Solomon proverb, and Solomon had more wisdom than anyone else. Okay, he, that's what he asked for. He was a very wise man. He asked God for wisdom. God gave him wisdom, and so this is very wise advice from a very wise man. But program note, as we go into this, and I talk about this just a little bit, this is not an absolute promise. Okay, if no one's ever told you that, let me tell you that. Okay, this is not an absolute promise promise. Because if you take this as an absolute promise, you could come to a place in your life where you feel like a failure. All right? Because if you think you have done everything that you think you need to do to train up your child in the way they would go, and when they get older, they do something that really embarrasses you, or they do something that you're like, I can't believe, or that's not the way they were raised, and whatever else, let me tell you something. This is how God made me. This is how God made you. You have free will. Okay? You have free will. Your children have free will. They at any time in their life can make a choice to follow God or they can make a choice to go wrong. We all have it. It is all within us. So know that, okay? This is good advice because, listen, here's the thing about this advice that Solomon gives us. If you don't, there ain't no hope, okay? If you don't give them good advice, if you don't train them up in the way that, that, that they, if you don't teach them wise things when they are little, if you don't instill that into them, then for certain, they're not going to go in the right direction. Okay? That's just for certain. But don't, it, it, there, I know some of you are in that place. Some, some of you have gone through those seasons of life with children. And, and as you go through those seasons of your life, you're like, look, I took them to Sunday school. I took them to church. I, I read the Bible. We pray. We did all these things. That He knows. She knows. They, why would they do this? Why would this happen? How could this happen? They have free will. Okay? They have other influences in their life. They have to listen. They have to discern. They have to make their own choice. Okay? And we're going to talk about that just a little bit more. But understand that this is very wise advice, and it's very good advice. And here's the thing. You need to study to become the best parent that you can be. Okay? 
You need to study to be, if you're going to train up a child in the way they would go, because there's a little something to this, and I'm not going to go too deep into the Hebrew language, but you got to understand something. God made your child, okay? It's his child first and will be his child forever. He loans them out to you to take care of. That's the way you have to understand. Children are a gift from the Lord. They are his kids, okay? Your child is his child, and he created your child. You say, well, it's just like me. Yeah, but he created you too, okay? And so he used your DNA to create that. And sometimes it's like, I don't know where this kid came from. I don't know where she came from. I don't know where he came from. He is nothing like me. He is nothing like his mama. He, she is nothing like anybody that we've ever seen before. She is just completely different, okay? God made them, okay? He is their creation. He is, and here's the thing, and, and, and you need to look at this and realize this. When they get older, they're going to be the same, okay? There are going to be certain bins. There are going to be certain things about them that are not going to change. Now, they may learn to like broccoli, okay? They may learn to like certain things, but there are certain things in children. They have certain bins. They have certain likes and dislikes that they will not change when they grow up. When they are older, they will not depart from the person that God made them. So you would be wise, Okay, you would be wise to parent them in the way that they are going. All right. If you do not nurture what God has gifted them with. Listen, this happens all the time. Okay, this happens all the time. A child may pick up a guitar. A child may sit down at the piano and and we want to kind of steer them away and put a ball bat in their hands and say, look, you don't need to do that. You need to do this. Okay? Or, or we take a child that wants to do this, and it's like, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to do this. Okay, This is what I like to do. Mistake. Okay, It's a mistake. God has built something into them, and you need to nurture that gift that God has given them in the way that they would. Because when they get older, they're still going to love to do it, whatever it is. Okay, If they love to swing the bat and they love to play ball, and you're like, no, you're going to learn to play the piano. Okay? not going to work, okay? They may learn, but they're going to be miserable. You have to nurture the gift that God has put into them, okay? You have to nurture that. You have to train them up in the way that God has created them because when they're older, they're, they're going to be that same child. And so it's your responsibility because every child that you have is different. It's not cookie-cutter parenting, okay? You say, well, I did the same thing with them that I did with this other one. Yep, then that's a mistake. It probably won't work. It, it, you have to change the way that you parent. Some kids have to be heavy hand. They have to be told exactly what they have to be given strict uh, guidelines. And then other kids, they got to have a little more freedom. Okay? You have to know the bend that your child is. You have to know how, they, how, they, how they're going to react to what you're going to do. We, we all make mistakes. Okay? Now, I've heard this. I've heard this used flippantly, and I've also sat with people and cried. And I've heard this word. I've heard these words. I'm a terrible parent. Okay, and I've also heard it going. I'm a terrible parent. Can you believe this? You know, look at what they're doing. And, and, and so we say this a lot. Okay, and, and I don't mean to use it flippantly, but this is what you need to understand. We all make mistakes. Okay, I know of no one. I've been I've been teaching for 26 years. I've had a lot of kids to come through my classroom, and I don't know of anybody who could come to me and say, "Hey, like my kid, I'm the perfect parent. <laughs> I've made no mistakes. Perfect all the way. Baloney." Okay, all of us do. We all make mistakes. We all do things, and then we're like, oh, I hope no one ever knows of this, okay? I hope no one ever, we must never speak of this, okay? Because I don't want anyone to know that I forgot you, okay? I don't want anyone to know that I left you at church, okay? And then I got home, and I'm like, where's she at? Well, I thought you were going to bring her. Oh, well, holy cow, I hope somebody's still there. And okay, you never want to let those things happen, see? Because that's what all my co-pastors do, you know? They leave their kids at church. See, I'm teasing. See, you see what happened? You see, we all make Mistakes. We all make mistakes. Let me challenge you. Learn from your mistakes. Okay? We need each other. We need each other. Listen, there are things in my life that I plugged into that that became very important to me. There are so many tremendous resources. There are so many tremendous resources. Become a student of your child. Become a student of parenting. Okay? Read. Look, communicate, 
form groups, okay? Living Faith would be a great place to have a mops group. Y'all know what a mops group is? Mothers of preschoolers, okay? We have a lot of moms here. We have a lot of preschoolers here, okay? That's a wonderful opportunity for, for parents to get together and, and, and get the kids playing somewhere and to sit down and go, how's it going, Okay? How's it going? You know, there was a church that was established uh, out, I can't remember uh, where it was at, but they, they decided to go into the community and survey the community to find out what the greatest need of the community was. Okay? The greatest need, that they went door to door and did a survey asking, what is the greatest need in your home right now? What is the one thing? Guess what the highest percentage response was in that neighborhood? Potty training. The highest percentage need in that neighborhood, just randomly going through and asking, more people said, we're potty training a toddler right now. We're about to lose our minds. Okay? We're about to lose. You know what the church did? They brought in some child psychologists. They brought in some other folks. They brought in people, and they went back to those same houses, and they handed out this thing and said, on Saturday, we're having a child seminar, and we're having a speaker, and we're going to talk about uh, how to potty train. Okay? Guess how many showed up? Everybody, okay? They all came. And a lot of them plugged into the church and started becoming a part because somebody said, look, you're not alone. You're not alone in this. There's advice. There's help. There's people out there that love you, that care about you, that want to help you with your children. It's an amazing thing. We need to plug into those things and we need to take advantage of those things that we have. Remember, you're not in this alone. You're not in this alone. The, the tendency is to be embarrassed by your child. Okay, now this is a lie of Satan. All right, the tendency is to be embarrassed by your child, to think that you're a failure, and then you want to retreat into hiding. And see, sometimes our children say things that makes us want to retreat into hiding. When Taylor was two, she was sitting in the front or in the cart with Sandy, and Sandy's checking out at the grocery line. And, and as she's checking out, all of a sudden, Taylor just looks at Sandy and says, Mom, when's Dad going to quit breaking the law? I had just surrendered to the ministry. I had just started pastoring. And Sandy's like, honey, what would you say? <laughs> She's moving stuff across the line going, what would you say? When's dad going to stop breaking the law? And, of course, the lady's checking out going, aren't you Greg's wife? What law is this? And so Sandy's like, I got to know. She said, honey, what law are you talking about? She said, you know, the family donut law. She said, he's not supposed to eat the last donut, but he did. It's supposed to be for me. And Sandy's like, she could have just melted into the floor. Kids say things all the time. And, and when they do, it, it's like, holy cow. And, and some of you have those, have those kinds of stories. You have those things. And, and they, they embarrass us. But listen, it's not. We don't need to retreat into hiding. Folks on the family was so uh, important to me. Uh, it was a ministry, Dr. Dobson was running that ministry at the time, and, and, and Focus on the Family has tremendous resources. Now it's basically internet-based and podcast-based and family.org, and it's out there. And if you've ever, if you can think it or dream it or have ever seen a kid do it, if you Google it or search it on the family.org website, there is an article and a book and a professional about it, okay? I'm not kidding. There is somebody there. And so I would listen to that radio broadcast every day back when you had to go to a certain time and, and listen to the radio. Now you can just punch it on your your iPod and, and just listen to it while you're carrying your kid and put the things in. And, and so, but, but there's resources, okay? There are resources. They're tremendous. And, and those folks are, are, are godly. You need to find somebody who, who you can trust. You need to find somebody that is scripturally based. And you need to plug into groups and you need to learn and become a study of your child and of parenting. Second thing that you need to remember is we must pray for and we must pray with our kids, okay? We need to pray for and we need to pray with our kids. Philippians chapter 4 says this, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Listen, you need to pray for your kids. If you're not, you need to start, okay? But you need to pray with your kids, okay? You need to teach your children to pray. You need to teach your children to pray. Teach them to adore God. Okay? Teach them to adore God. And, and this, is, this, is, this is the thing. It's, it's the Acts, A-C-T-S, if, if you can remember that. But teach them to adore God. 
Teach them to praise God. Listen, when you take them out for a walk, it doesn't matter how old they are. How You know, just teach them. Because, you know, when they're in that four-year-old stage, it's like, why? 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 You know, the why, the why stage when they're asking, why, Dad? Why, Mom? Why is this? Look how beautiful and blue the sky is. It is pretty. Why is it blue? You know, why is the grass green? They ask, but you need to, you need to be, that, those are those, oppor- those golden opportunities to say, God made it that way. Okay, God gave us this beautiful place that we live in. God gave us our home. God gave us this bed. We're going to thank God for air conditioning when it's hot and humid. Okay, we're going to thank God for, for, for good, clean water. Okay, just a glass of water. That's an opportunity to sit down with a kid and say, you know what? There's millions of kids in the world, and most of them don't have this. Okay, I mean, we don't want to drink tap water. Okay, we want to get it in a bottle. Okay, that somebody else put it in the bottle out of their tap. Okay, but it's okay as long as it's in a bottle. But we don't, we don't, we need to teach kids how precious of a resource that God has given us and where we live and those opportunities that we have to teach our kids what we have. And, and so we need to teach them to adore God. We need to teach them to confess their sins. Listen, kids make mistakes. Come on, they're kids. Okay, I've told you this. You know, toddlers are not nice people. Okay. They're just not nice people, okay? Because that's where, you know, and it's wired into them because they're just humans, okay? And after the fall of man, sin is in the heart. And so that's why we get mine. It's mine. And they run away, okay? And, and so those are those opportunities for us to sit down and say, look, come on, this is, not, this is not right, okay? Great story I heard the other night. One of my former students called me and said, I hadn't talked to you in a while. I just was thinking about you and wanted to call and talk. And I said, well, I've got a little time. Let's talk. And so we talked about everything. He's got kids, and, and he said, you know, he said, my son made a mistake in preschool. He's a little older than that now. He said, I don't think I've ever told you the story. He said, but, uh, but he hit another child in preschool. And, you know, that happens. And he said, that they, they told my wife when she picked him up that day that he had hit another child. And so he came home, and he said, I, I brought him in. I said, so, uh, son, I understand you hit another child today. He said, can you tell me about it? And he said, well, he said, Dad, I, I was sitting, he's got a little, little girl that he likes in preschool, if you can believe this. He said, they kept bothering us, wanting us to go play. And he said, we were perfectly content where we were at, Dad. He said, we were just sitting there on a bench, and he said, we were perfectly content, and they kept bugging us, and they kept bugging us. And he said, all of a sudden, my hand went up, and he said, I didn't want to do it, Dad. He said, I really didn't want to do it. He said, but my hand was there, and he said, he just kept bugging him, and he kept bugging me. And he said, all of a sudden, I hit him three times. Bam, bam, bam. And, and he, he looked at him. He said, well, son, I don't want to spank you. He said, but my hand. He said, he said his son looked up at him and said, don't do it, Dad. That's what happened to me. <laughs> and he said, it didn't work out for me. <laughs> it happens, okay? Kids make mistakes. And, of course, you can imagine what happened then. It was like a one of those moments. But... Kids make mistakes, and when they do, we need to teach them that it's wrong, okay? We need to have those opportunities to sit down and say, you know, you said you didn't want to do what you did today, okay? And you're right. You shouldn't have done what you did, okay? And what you did wrong today, son, that's sin, all right? That's sin. That's the, God would, have, would God have had you to do that? No, okay? And, and so what you did wrong is sin. And so when we sin, what do we do? We confess it to God, okay? And then we need to teach them about forgiveness. We need to teach our children to be thankful. Listen, that's a beautiful, when we pray at the table, we just need to remind them, hey, look, not everybody's got it like this, okay? Not everybody has it like we do, okay? Not everybody, when we go to Walmart, okay, we like to get in and get out and we get a little bit frustrated, but listen, when, when I'll never forget when the, the, the uh, uh, I think he was from Taiwan, came to, ten- to Tennessee and the old commissioner of agriculture Cotton Ivy, he said, I couldn't speak any Taiwanese, and we were supposed to give him an ag tour, and he said, nobody showed up on time. He said, so I just put him in the car and took him to Kroger. Walked up and down the aisles. He said, I couldn't talk to him. He said, I just walked up and down the aisles and went, American agriculture. And he said, when we got back, his interpreter come in. He said, ask him what he thought about his trip to Kroger. And the guy said something. He's like, what did he say? He said, he said it is heaven. He said it was heaven. That we don't have opportunities. We don't have things. We need to teach our children how blessed we are, that we have food, that we have a place to live, that we live in America. We need to teach them to be thankful, and we need to teach them where those 
blessings come from. Those blessings come to us from our Father in heaven. Okay? We need to teach those kids. Listen, it's, it's a golden opportunity when we have them. When we have them around. Listen, all of you can do that. Okay? You say, I don't have kids. I don't know who he's talking to. Listen, when the children come in, you guys teach classes. You Sunday, you're just out here in the hallway. You know, when you get the opportunity, when God, I call them teachable moments. Okay? When God gives you the teachable moment, you say, here it is. Okay? Here it is. You know? David Coleman, when you pull them bass up out of the water, man, that's a gift of God. Okay? When that kid's in the boat, you say, look here. This don't have to always happen, okay? Some people fish like Greg Hiller does, and they don't get this opportunity, but God bless me, okay? Here it is. When we get something, when God is so good to us, we need to thank Him for it, okay? And we need to pass that on to our kids. We need to help them understand that our blessings come from Him. Our blessings come from Him. Last thing, we've got to pass it on. We've got to pass it on. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verses 6 and 7 says, These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. They're to be on your hearts. You need to impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Okay, listen, we have a great church here. We do. And we've got a children's ministry that is second to none, I believe, anywhere Anywhere. All right? We do. It is great. But they will be the first to tell you <laughs> it starts at home. Okay? Do not leave that to them. Do not leave that to us. Okay? We will enhance. We will teach. We will share. We do what we're called to do. Brother Tim and his family will do what they are called to do to teach your children. But listen, come on. It's your responsibility. It's your responsibility while you're at home, when you go down the road, when you go to sleep at night, when you get up in the morning, you are to impress the things of God on your children because you have to pass it on. You have to pass it on. Don't count on bringing them to church as the only connection they have to God. All right? It has to begin in the home. And here's the thing. <laughs> Pastor Tim will, 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 will agree with me on this 100%. We get no greater joy than when you come to us and say, we prayed together last night and they received Christ. Huh? Am I right? Yeah, that's exactly. We get no greater joy than that, okay? I mean, that is the greatest joy. We don't look at you and go, well, that's our job. Why didn't you wait till you they come? No, uh, no, 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 no. We get no greater joy than when you bring your little child to us and say, we prayed last night, they received Christ, they want to be baptized. Listen, you know what we're going to say? Hey, you prayed. We're going to fill this tank up over here. We're going to hold your hand. We're going to get you a towel. And if you'd like to baptize your child, we're going to help you do that because that's what the Great Commission is all about, right? It begins at home. Teach them to obey all of my commands and baptize them in the name of the Father and the Holy Son. That's what we are all about, okay? It's passing it on. Listen, we are one always. This is always true. We are one generation away from godlessness. And listen, in some cultures, it's dangerously close. Okay? In some cultures, it is dangerously close. But I'm, I'm going to give you some good news. Okay? All right? I'm going to scare you just a little bit, but I'm going to give you some good news. See, in Germany, over 90% of the millennial population, those born between 1980 and 2000, 90% of that population do not even know a Christian. Are you with me? Now, I didn't say there was 90% weren't Christians and 10%. Well, I said 90% don't even know anybody who is a Christian. When you, when you interview that generation of that population and say, do you know Christ? They'll look at you blank. And then you ask the question, do you know anybody who is a Christian? 90% of them will go, mm, nah. All right? Well, listen, that's scary. That's what I mean when I say one generation away from godlessness. That's Germany, people. That's where Martin Luther, <laughs> that's where the Reformation started. Come on. That's where it started. And 90% of that age group doesn't even know a Christian. Now, here's some encouragement. I said I was going to encourage you. When we talk to people who don't know Christ, they're open. They're open. Their hearts are open. They'll, they'll listen. They will listen. So we have got to pass it on. 
We have to have that drilled into our head. We have to understand that that is our responsibility. Listen, when you hear somebody say, well, I'm not going to do this to my, I'm not going to put, in, I'm not going to force religion on my kids. I'm not going to take them to church. I'm just going to let them grow up and choose it on the, wrong answer. Okay? That is wrong. It is not biblical. There's nothing biblical about it. Okay? Everything I've read to you this morning and everything that you've got in your Bibles right there, you've heard that I haven't told you, I haven't found anything for you that you all haven't already heard. But you need to be reminded. I need to be reminded that we have to pass it on. What are we passing on? The gospel. We're passing on the gospel. We have to pass on what Jesus did for us. We have to share it. We have to share it with our kids. We have to share it with our grandchildren. You know, I listen, I know there's a lot of folks that are ra you're raising grandchildren. Okay? We're raising grandchildren. And that's, that's okay. I don't, I'm not going to fault anybody for wherever you are, whatever situation, but, but you've got to understand that that child is a child of God, and if God has placed them in your watch care, then it's your responsibility to pass it on, to teach them who Jesus is, to teach Him what He did, and to teach Him what He did for them and how they can have a personal relationship with Him. But listen, you can't do that very well at all if you're not. Okay, it starts with you. It starts with the one who has it. The greatest thing that you can do for your children, the greatest thing that you can do for a child is to first become a child of God. All right, is to first become a child of God. And maybe you used, maybe you were, maybe you have made that decision for a long time and you just kind of walked away from it. Okay, maybe you haven't been. Listen, you can rededicate your life to him. You can come back to him. You can repent and come back, and, and, and you can re, reacquaint with him. Listen, he's still there, okay? He's still there. He never left, okay? If you, if you, if, if any point in your life, I teach this to kids all the time, teach it to people all the time. If you in your, your life at some point in time reached out to God, he took hold of you, okay? And he'll hold on to you. You may let go of him, okay? <laughs> you may let go of him, but he'll hold on to you, and he is right there. He's right there waiting. Listen, come on. You may have not talked to him for a long time. He's listening. Okay? He's listening. He's just that close. You don't even have to get his attention. All right? You just say, Father. And he's right there. He's as close as your next breath. Listen, you know where you are. And you know what you need to do. And, and maybe some of you need to come and pray for your kids. Maybe some of you need to come and pray for your grandkids. Maybe there's a child in your life that you need to come. Maybe there's a parent in your life you need to come and pray for. And maybe there's somebody here that needs, for the very first time, to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, to begin that journey, to make that happen so that you can become the best parent, grandparent, caretaker for a child that you can be. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for our kids. We thank you, Father, that you've blessed us. And, and Father, we realize that our children are a gift from you. Father, help us to raise them in the way that they're going. Father, help us to teach them your ways so that when they get older, they have a foundation that they can rely on, that we can nurture them in the way that you've created them. Father, help us to teach them to love you, to worship you, to adore you, to confess our, their sins to you, to be thankful for all that you've given them, and, and, and to ask them, Father, to take care of them. Father, help us to pass it on. You know where we are. You know what decisions we need to make. You know where we stand, Father, when it comes to you. And Father, maybe there's someone here this morning for the very first time needs to accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. Maybe there's someone here that needs to pray for a child or somebody that has been placed into their care. Father, you know how we need to respond. And we'll pray, Father. We just pray this morning that you'll just respond in the way that you've called us. Help us, Father. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please stand?